Hey y'all, Coach in the Fight here, talking about fasting. Now, in a recent video, one pertaining to Atonement Day, I showed you guys in the book of Jubilees, where in chapter 50, Moses said that if anybody were to fast on the Sabbath day, they would die. And since Atonement Day is a Sabbath day, it caused quite a stir. There was a lot of comments on the subject. A lot of them were negative as we have always been taught to fast on Atonement Day by the Jewish community. That's actually a Jewish tradition to fast on Atonement Day. But it's in direct conflict with what we see in the Book of Jubilees, which counts fasting with making war or killing animals and promises that if we did any of those things on a Sabbath day, we would die. So in this video, I just want to come on and do a little bit of follow up on this. First, pointing out the fact that the book of Jubilees is the only book that we know of that Moses actually used the word fasting. Let me show you what I mean. We're over here in the concordance looking at Strong's number 6685, which could be pronounced to summa and means fast or fasting. We're looking here in the times in which this word was used in the Bible and notice how the first time that Strong's number 6685 is used is all the way up in 2 Samuel chapter 12. And the next time we see it is in 1 Kings and then 2 Chronicles. Ezra and Nehemiah, even Esther talks about fasting in the sense of abstaining from food. But notice that it's not in the Torah at all. Never do you hear anywhere in the first five books of the Bible. Never did Moses say anything about fasting. It's just not mentioned. Nobody did a fast. And more importantly, we were never ever commanded or even instructed to do a no food fast whatsoever. That's not a commandment given by Moses at all. And all we see, like the first time fasting is used over in 2 Samuel, all we see is examples of people who took it up on themselves to do a fast in order to fix something that they had going on. See, like here in 1 Kings 21, they proclaimed a fast. Our Father in heaven, hallowed be his name, did instruct them to fast. They took it up on themselves, just like they did over here in 2 Chronicles. The third time we see somebody doing a food fast, Jehoshaphat proclaimed a fast throughout all of Judah. Not Moses, not our father. This was like a personal preference that these people were doing in order to appease our father for one thing or another. So what is it that we are supposed to be doing if it's not fasting? Well, one place I want to bring you is over to the third testament of the Bible. Chapter 17 and verse 17 says, teach your brothers how to pray. Make them comprehend that it is their spirits which must communicate with their creator, that their prayer are almost always mere cries of the material form an expression of their anguish, proof of their lack of faith and of their mistrust or lack of obedience to me. Talking about prayer and how that is the way our father expects us to appease him. But look at verse 18. It says, make your brothers understand that they do not need to mortify or lacerate their bodies to move my spirit and awaken my pity or charity. So this is talking about fasting, actually harming our bodies in order to move his spirit. That's what they were doing over there in Ezra and in Nehemiah. And in the book of Esther, they were mortifying their bodies or torturing their bodies in order to get movement from our father. But you see here in the third testament, he's saying that that's error and equating it to those who lacerate their body or use those whips to beat themselves. Most of us wouldn't do that. And I would hope it would be more than just because the Jewish people didn't make it a tradition. If they had made it a tradition for us to be walking around lacerating ourselves and cutting ourselves, would we be bloodletting in order to move our father? I hope you understand the importance of getting away from the Jewish traditions and following what the scripture says 
And like I say again, Moses didn't even mention fasting, didn't even use the word at all, nowhere in the Torah, period. But look here, it says those who seek suffering or bodily penitence do so because they do not have the slightest idea of which offerings are most pleasing to me, nor do they have any idea of the love and mercy of their father. So people who are fast and have no idea what they're doing is what it says here. That's not how we approach him or communicate with him or do anything for him. You can think of it like your children. Do you allow your children to get their way if they decide to harm themselves, bump their head against the wall or cut themselves? But anyway, verse 19 says, Do you think it is necessary for me to see the tears in your eyes or the pain in your hearts for me to have pity on you? In other words, do you think that we have to hurt ourselves for him to have pity on us? To believe so would be to attribute to me hardness, insensitivity, indifference, and selfishness. And you think about that for a moment. Like for instance on Atonement Day. In light of what we're reading here, does it make sense that we would be harming our bodies for atonement? What would that say about our Creator? If He were to have us to torture ourselves in order to get atonement. Like it says here, that would attribute to him hardness and insensitivity, selfishness. Can you imagine these defects in the God you love? No, guys, we're not supposed to be fasting in this manner. The last verse in this lesson says, How little care you have taken to know me, and it is because you have not educated your minds to think in accord with my spirit. And that's not even what Atonement Day is all about anyway. When you look back at Leviticus chapter 23 and 27, it doesn't say fast at all or do anything with your body at all. Like I said, that's Jewish traditions. And according to what we read in Moses, that tradition actually carries the death penalty. Fasting on Atonement Day or any Sabbath day will get you killed. But what Leviticus 23 was really saying was afflict your souls or humble your spirit is what that translates to. And that's what the third testament is talking about over here is how we have to educate ourselves in order to do just that. Think in accord with our spirit. That reminds me of what the Messiah said over in John chapter 4 and verse 23. When he says, but the hour cometh and now is when the true worshipers shall worship the father in spirit and in truth for the father seeketh such to worship him, not harming our bodies or mutilating our bodies, but to approach him on a spirit level. Because you see there in verse 24, he is a spirit and they that worship him must worship him in spirit and in truth. Again, pointing out the necessity to reject the Jewish tradition of fasting, which is all about the body and is a lie. Now, if you've been around this channel for a while, you know that Isaiah chapter 58 is what we're supposed to be doing on Atonement Day. It gives us detail on what his fast actually looks like and what he expects us to be doing in replacement of a fast or in rejection of the Jewish tradition of fasting. And even goes on to tell us how we are supposed to be behaving on our Sabbath days and such. So go over there and check that one out. I hear you guys say you've heard that one enough. I say good because it's extremely important. But for those who are still thinking about fasting, let me show you some things you could do if you really wanted to do a food type fast. Like for instance, how over here in the Keys of Enoch where the author was told that he was to eat no food of the false powers of the earth. In other words, he was not supposed to eat any food of the beast system. Now, if you want to do a serious food fast, try that. Go without eating food from the grocery store or processed foods or something along that line. And then if you want a fast according to the scripture, you can do the fast that the Messiah did. When we have this discussion, people always bring up the Messiah and how he fasted. But you have to understand that the Messiah wasn't just making up stuff. He 
You see that he didn't get any instructions from Moses on how to fast. So where did his fast come from? The same place that Daniel's fast came from and Moses' fast came from. And that's the book called The Apocalypse of Abraham, which is the only scriptural text that gives instruction on what a food fast looks like. And let me say that again. Even though you have examples of people proclaiming fast and doing fast in the Bible, never are you given instruction on how to do it or what it looks like except in the apocalypse of Abraham. And you see in this book how it was actually a 40 day fast that Abraham was taught. This is the fast that the Messiah was on. This is the fast that he did. Again, this is coming from the book of the Apocalypse of Abraham. Well, down here in verse 3, it says, Because you have loved to search me out, and I have named you my friend. This is our father talking to Abraham. He says, But abstain from every form of food that comes forth out of the fire, and from drinking of wine, and from anointing thyself with oil for 40 days. This is the 40-day fast. This is what the Messiah was doing. But notice it says nothing about water there. The Messiah could drink all the water he needed. What it's telling him to do is not to drink any wine for those 40 days. That's along the lines of the vow of the Nazarite. Where you abstain from anything from the grapevine. Where here you see Abraham being instructed that the food fast, and I say for emphasis, the food fast is abstaining from wine for 40 days and any food that comes out of the fire. Talking about any cooked food. So the Messiah could eat. He was just eating vegetables or leaves or flowers. And the thing about it, when you read all of the scripture, you see several examples of this where people just ate flowers and stuff like that. What they were doing was abstaining from cooked foods. And then you see this part here where it says from anointing thyself with oil. You hear about that in the Jewish tradition, which to me says they know about this book. But anyway, that's all I have to offer today. If you have anything to say, please add it in the comment section and I'll see you there. Shalom.